Puppetry is a kind of magic. It's very related to the world of magic and illusion. When they first come to life, I, I, I kind of find out who they are. They, they sort of have a life of their own that has to do with how they're engineered and carved and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, bring these characters to life and sort of fall in love with them. About two years ago, right around the time my mother died, she was a bird watcher and we spent, my youth was spent photographing birds. And, and that inspired a whole show about how she inspired me in nature. She did that for me as a child. And so uh, I dreamt about a flock of pelicans. I could handle the puppet, I could, it was a fan-like structure and I could flex it like this to, to make them swoop and go down and up and then I saw in the dream different strings to pull to randomize the wing movement. I feel like I'm an artist who engineers, you know, the engineering is definitely a part of the process so that is half the fun and then actually performing it and how it will interact with the audience or fly over the heads of the children and that kind of thing. I started with marionettes, but very quickly I became attracted to these rod puppets, this older 19th century style, which is not really done this way anymore. She's carved out of holly, the rods to the hands, which are operated almost like chopsticks in a way. And then I have controls to her head, which the side to side and up and down are things that had existed in puppetry before I came up with the the additional mechanism to tilt the head, and I think that's the most expressive thing she does. I'm the audience for her. I'm watching her as if I'm the audience, so there's a communication between myself and the puppet. She gives me chills. I know, me too. I have a crush on her. <laughs> yeah, she's lovely. The first puppets I made were, were made out of wood, and so you had to joint the puppets and, and think about how they would be uh, manipulated. I decided I would try working with carving foam rubber. The animation and the, the jointing is just built right into the material. And once I carve this, it can be very realistic. I actually learned this technique uh, visiting Jim Henson's studio when I was applying for work on the movie The Dark Crystal. They were using it for incidental things, props and things, but I was interested in just working with the raw foam and not covering it, just painting it. When I first got started, I wasn't very careful with all this mess, and I had a dream that I was eating a a foam rubber hamburger and, and the next day I found some of this in my mouth I went okay I gotta clean my act up a little bit here. Everyone has their own kind of intelligence some are great uh, musicians or linguistic or interpersonal and, I, and I'm a visual spatial person. My grandfather was a New York businessman and he couldn't believe that his grandson would be a puppeteer. That grandfather used to break my father's crayons as a little boy because there were artists in the family, but they, they squelched that. And uh, my, my own father, he was not excited about his son becoming a puppeteer. <laughs> I think he finally got it toward the end. He worked at the uh, New York Stock Exchange. I told my friends that it, my dad sold socks and bonnets. Yeah. <laughs> I take these shows, you know, go all over North Carolina, but then all over the country. I'll often go into a library or school and there'll be older kids and they're sitting there like this. I'm like, we are not going to like this. I might initially get into it because how it's done mechanically, then they'll get into the beauty of it. That's part of the appeal of creating puppets, is that they're kind of transformational. They want the experience to be something of wonder. 
And quite often they'll tell me that when you were doing that eagle and flying over me, you like turned invisible. I love that. Okay, got a rest. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was getting into this, I thought I was getting into just performing and making a living, but then it became all, all of these other layers unfolded and I saw what a powerful medium it was. Uh, I'll do a performance for the kids and then we'll go into a classroom. They will learn more about engineering from making something out of cardboard and string and straws and engineering them and using their hands. I can't remember a lot of those lessons that I learned in math, but uh, when you combine the arts with education, that just sort of deepens that experience. They'll remember that their whole life. So I really love teaching puppetry, especially shadow puppetry. You're working in a two-dimensional world, so the silhouettes have to be uh, created so that they read properly. And the little characters are, are articulated and jointed. This is just a very simple shadow puppet made out of cardboard with brass fasteners like so. And you want them to have a little bit of movement and animation. Working with the rods horizontal, perpendicular to the screen like that, allows the rods to mostly disappear. A couple of years ago, the Avit brothers approached me about making a music video for them. I created uh, this for a song called Bring Your Love. The puppets were filmed and then in the computer, the silhouettes were plucked out of the white background and so they could be placed against other backgrounds then. It's a little story that, that I sort of read into the lyrics. It's not what they intended at all. but it, it turned into quite a lovely piece. The whole thing has a real film-like quality, but they all began just by being filmed on this screen. I think the arts are so important. So we have a, a cartwheels grant that takes me into underserved counties in schools. And there'll be a child who has the creative ability, but they, they sort of discover themselves a new ability that they may not have even known about. And I'll see that their genius is their hands. And I hope that they really recognize that. You know, people sometimes ask me, you're a puppet, you're a what? You're a puppeteer? Like who would, why? Why would you do that? And uh, after they see a good show, they, they know why. They understand it then. <laughs>